Thank you for watching this part two of our 10 part series called The Vast Voyage, which outlines qualified plans from even before implementation to closing one down and everything in between. Now, this video will go over some fundamental plan options and requirements as it relates to qualified plans. Hi there, my name is Kenner French. This is gonna be a brief one, by the way. Um, with Vast Solutions Group, where tax, finance, and artificial intelligence meets for the entrepreneur. We do qualified plan consulting to include administration of 401ks, profit sharing plans, defined benefit plans, etc. We've been in business for over 50 years and use artificial intelligence to better the life of the entrepreneur. Uh, so I personally, by the way, have been in the industry since 1994. I've written two books, have another on the way. I've written several articles on LinkedIn. I'm a Forbes.com contributor, and I've also been the same for the Palm Beach Times. Now, most importantly, by the way, I've been married for over 25 years and have a passion for helping the entrepreneur better their situation. Now, you've paid $1,200 for this series, so let's get right to it. We want to add value. In the retirement plan game, it's basically all or nothing. Any form of operational defect can potentially cause the plan to lose its tax deferred status. There are many qualification requirements and we're gonna go into a couple of those as we speak right now. A plan can't be established by employees, only by an employer. An employer can be any business entity form such as a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, LLC. A qualified plan must be in writing. An oral agreement is not sufficient. Think of the plan document as a contract between the employer and the employee, which states things such as eligibility, coverage, vesting, and distribu distribution requirements. The plan must be a funding vehicle that has been set up to have the plan established for an IRA-based plan. The funding vehicle is an IRA. A qualified trust is exempt from federal tax and it has four basic requirements. Number one, it's gotta have a creator. Number two, property. Number three, a trust. And four, finally, a beneficiary. A trust may be a separate document or incorporated into the plan document itself. It is written as a separate document then. The trustee and the employer must sign the trust document. The employer mo must formally adopt the terms of the plan by a corporate resolution, as it's called, if required by the state by the end of the initial plan year, no matter what. A plan is not qualified until it's, not, it's communicated to the employees who are and may become plan participants. Hopefully, this part was helpful in teaching you just a little bit about the voyage through which we're gonna be walking down involving qualified plans. This was a small one, but this is a very, very important one. You have to have written documents and you have to have the things outlined. Now, if you have any questions, have any concerns, what have you, about getting on and doing your own plan document, et cetera, et cetera, please look us up on the web at www.vastsolutionsgroup.com or give us a call at 888-808-8278. We'd be more than help, happy to help you. We want to add value to you just as we've been able to add value to so many clients. As a matter of fact, a number of our uh, clients on our website have gone on to say that we've saved tremendous amounts of money. One doctor, as a matter of fact, said, over the years, you've saved us over a million dollars. Now, if you want something like that to happen for you or some of your clients, let us know. Or potentially, maybe some of these concepts that we will be talking about in the vast voyage will allow you to better help someone to save a million dollars or more.